Welcome to part one of integration involving partial fraction decomposition. Partial fraction decomposition is a process used to rewrite rational functions as a sum or difference of rational functions that are easier to integrate. So in algebra, we often combine rational expressions as we see here by obtaining a common denominator. But in calculus, we often want to reverse the process to help integrate. So in calculus, if we have this rational function, it's going to be easier to integrate if you write it as a sum of these two simpler rational functions. And in most cases, we use this integration formula here, where the integral of one over u with respect to u is equal to natural log absolute by u plus c. So now we'll review the process for performing partial fraction decomposition, and then take a look at two examples. Before we perform partial fraction decomposition, as an initial step, if the degree of the numerator is greater than or equal to the degree of the denominator, we must divide the denominator into the numerator to obtain a polynomial plus a rational expression where the degree of p sub one, this polynomial here, is less than the degree of q, our denominator. So again, if the degree of p is greater than or equal to the degree of q, we'll perform long division, resulting in a polynomial plus a rational expression where the degree of p sub one will be less than the degree of q. So once the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, we can perform partial fraction decomposition. And for step one, we completely factor the denominator into prime linear and quadratic factors. Step two, for every distinct linear factor, we must include a fraction in this form here, where the numerator is an unknown constant and the denominator is a linear factor. And for repeated linear factors in this form here, notice how we have n repeated linear factors, we must include n terms in the form described here. Where the numerator consists of unknown constants, and each fraction picks up one repeated linear factor until we have all n repeated factors. For quadratic factors in this form, we must include fractions that look like this, where now, the numerator consists of linear factors, and the denominator is our quadratic factor. And once again, if we have repeated quadratic factors, we must include fractions that look like this until we have all n repeated quadratic factors. So once we have the partial fractions, we multiply each fraction by the LCD, and the result is called the basic equation. So the last step will be to solve the basic equation by selecting convenient values of x to determine the numerators of the partial fractions. So let's take a look at our first example. As a first step, notice the degree of the numerator is zero and the degree of the denominator is two. And since the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, we can go ahead and perform partial fraction decomposition. So for the first step, let's go ahead and factor the denominator. We'll have two binomial factors. We'll have x and x. The factors of negative six that add to negative one are negative three and positive two. So now we'll take the rational function and perform partial fraction decomposition. So we'll have two divided by the quantity x minus three times the quantity x plus two. We have two distinct linear factors, so our first fraction will contain an unknown constant a divided by the first distinct linear factor of x minus three. This linear factor is not repeated, so we go to the next linear factor of the quantity x plus two, so we'll have plus b, another unknown constant, divided by the quantity x plus two. These are our two partial fractions, and now we're gonna clear the fractions from this equation by multiplying everything by the LCD, which will give us our basic equation. And since the least common denominator would be the quantity x minus three times the quantity x plus two, we'll multiply every fraction by those two linear factors. Notice how in this first fraction, we have x minus three over x minus three and x plus two over x plus two, which just gives us two equals. This next product, we have an x minus three over x minus three, leaving us with a times the quantity x plus two plus here we have an x plus two over x plus two, leaving us with b times the quantity x minus three. Well, now we're gonna select convenient values of x in order to solve for a and b. 
For example, notice when x equals negative two, the quantity x plus two would be zero. So x equals negative two is a convenient value of x to select. So when x is negative two, we would have two equals, this would be zero, and since x is negative two, we'd have b times negative five or negative five b. Dividing both sides by negative five, we can see that b must equal negative two-fifths. So looking above for a moment, for this fraction here where we had b divided by the quantity x plus two, b would be negative two-fifths. Now for the next value of x to select, notice for the quantity x minus three, if x equals three, this would be zero. So now we'll select x equals three, which would give us the equation two equals, if x is three, this would be a times five, or five a, and again, this would be zero. So dividing both sides by five, we now know that a must be two-fifths. Which means our integral of two divided by the quantity x minus three times the quantity x plus two is equal to the integral of where a is two-fifths, so we'd have two-fifths divided by the quantity x minus three and since b is negative, it'd be minus two-fifths divided by the quantity x plus two integrated with respect to x. Let's go ahead and finish this on the next slide. Let's go ahead and write this as two integrals and we'll also factor out the two-fifths. So this is equal to two-fifths times the integral of one divided by the quantity x minus three and then minus two-fifths times the integral of one divided by the quantity x plus two. If we try to perform u substitution here, notice u is equal to x minus three, and du is equal to dx. So these don't require u substitution, this would just be two-fifths natural log absolute value of the quantity x minus three minus two-fifths times natural log absolute value of x plus two plus c, a constant of integration. Let's go ahead and take a look at a second example. The first thing we should notice about this example is that the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator. So we have to perform long division before we perform partial fraction decomposition. So let's go ahead and do this over on the side. We have x squared plus three x minus four divided by the quantity x squared minus two x minus eight. To get started, we're only concerned about this first term and this first term, there's only one x squared and x squared, so we'll have one up here, we'll multiply and then subtract. So one times this quadratic would just be x squared minus two x minus eight. The important thing to remember here is that we are now going to subtract. Instead of subtracting though, we're going to add the opposite. So we can change this to plus, if we change this to a negative, this to plus, and this to a plus. And now we can just go ahead and add, this would be zero, this would be five x, and this would be plus four. Which means the original integral is equal to the integral of one plus the remainder of five x plus four divided by the divisor of x squared minus two x minus eight. And now we'll perform partial fraction decomposition on this fraction here Notice how the degree of the numerator is one, and the degree of the denominator is two. So we can't forget about this one, but now we're gonna work with just this rational expression. So let's go ahead and factor the denominator. So we have x and x. The factors of negative eight to add to negative two are negative four and positive two. Again, we have two distinct linear factors, so we'll have a divided by the quantity x minus four plus b times the quantity x plus two. Now we're gonna clear the fraction by multiplying by the LCD, which will be these two linear factors. So now we'll multiply everything by x minus four and x plus two. Now we'll simplify. So we have the quantity five x plus four equals a times the quantity x plus two 
plus b times the quantity x minus 4. This is our basic equation, so we'll take this over to the next slide and solve for a and b. And now we'll select convenient values of x. So notice that x plus 2 would be 0 when x equals negative 2, and x minus 4 would be 0 when x equals 4. So when x is negative 2, this would be negative 10 plus 4, that's negative 6 equals, this would be 0. This would be b times negative 6, or negative 6 times b. So b equals positive 1. And when x is 4, this would be 5 times 4 plus 4, 24, equals 6a. And this would be 0. Dividing both sides by 6, notice that a equals 4. So now that we know the values of a and b, if we go back to the previous slide, we'd have the integral of 1 plus these two fractions here with the values of a and b that we just found. So we'd have the integral of 1 plus a divided by x minus 4 plus b divided by x plus 2, where now we know that a is 4 and b is 1. So we have the integral of 1 plus a is 4, so 4 divided by the quantity x minus 4 plus b is 1. We could separate this into three different integrals. But let's go ahead and integrate in this form. The integral of 1 would be x plus 4 times the integral of 1 over the quantity x minus 4 would be natural log absolute value x minus 4 plus the integral of 1 divided by the quantity x plus 2 is natural log absolute value x plus 2 and then plus c. So notice in these two examples, all the denominators had linear factors. In part two, we'll look at some examples where we have quadratic factors as well as repeated factors. Hope you found this first part helpful.